This video demonstrates the use of aseptic technique as applied to mammalian cell culture. Mammalian cells can be cultured in the laboratory. They're fed nutrient-rich medium and cultured in a variety of tissue culture dishes, flasks, or plates. One of the key challenges in culturing mammalian cells is to ensure that only the intended cell line is clean and that no contaminants, no bacteria, fungi, or other cells enter the culture system. The methods of aseptic technique are designed to help maintain the sterility of all culture vessels in all culture media. A key aspect of aseptic technique is having a clean workspace for cell culture procedures. Cell culture procedures are performed within the workspace of a laminar flow hood or biosafety cabinet. Within this workspace, there is a downward flow of filtered air, and this acts as a protective curtain to keep particulates and aerosols from entering our culture system. When working with mammalian cells, it's a good idea to have a dedicated lab coat for tissue culture purposes. This helps to reduce tracking of contaminants from other parts of the lab or from the outside world into the clean workspace. As you begin a cell culture work session, Put on a clean pair of gloves and wipe them down with 70% ethanol to reduce contamination from your hands entering the workspace. Turn on the blower for the hood and raise the sash to the designated level. Wipe down the interior of the cabinet space with 70% ethanol to reduce any bacterial contaminants that might be in the workspace. As you begin to place needed items into the hood for your work session, spray the exterior surface of each with 70% ethanol to reduce bacteria. This includes tubes, tube racks, bottles of media, and pipetters. As you begin working with cultured cells, there are several key aspects of aseptic technique that are important to keep in mind. Whenever a bottle or tube or flask or dish is open, the interior and contents are vulnerable to contamination. It's particularly important to be aware of the zone directly above any open vessel. Any contaminants within this region could fall into the vessel and contaminate the contents. So it's important to learn not to pass your hand or arm or pipetter into the zone directly above an open vessel. It's also a good idea to minimize the time any vessel is open. So as soon as you've transferred the needed reagents, recap the vessel immediately. Another potential source of contamination is the rim or lip of any cap or lid and the neck of any flask and the threads between the two. Avoid touching these vulnerable areas and do not allow liquid to splash or accumulate in these areas as that is a potential avenue for contamination to enter the vessel. Good sterile technique also requires that you become aware of each pipette you use and maintain the sterility of the tip and shaft of the pipette. Any contamination on the shaft or tip of a pipette could readily be transferred to a bottle of medium or flask of cells. In order to accomplish these goals and to keep all vessels and pipettes sterile, it's a good idea to organize the items in the hood workspace in such a fashion that you can reach each item without having to pass your hand above any other item. Next, in order to demonstrate how these principles are combined in aseptic technique, I will pipette some medium from one bottle into another. This disposable pipette is sterile inside its wrapper, but the exterior of the wrapper may have been exposed to contaminants. So I am going to open the pipette by peeling back the wrapper. That way, when I withdraw the pipette, the shaft and the tip of the pipette are exposed only to the sterile interior surface of the wrapper. Now I'm going to hold the pipette aloft, and taking care not to touch the pipette against anything, I'm going to open the bottle of medium. I want to remove the cap, but I don't want to set it down, as that's a potential source of contamination along the rim of the cap. So I'm going to remove the cap with the back side of my hand. That way I can keep the cap aloft and use my thumb and forefinger to tilt the bottle toward the pipetter. With the bottle tilted, I can insert the pipette without having to pass my hand or the pipetter over the open container. I've dribbled a little medium out of the bottom of my pipette. So I'm going to wipe that up immediately with 70% ethanol to prevent it from being transferred to the bottom of a culture dish or flask. 
one of the easiest ways to understand good aseptic technique is to become aware of common mistakes that lead to contamination, things that you should avoid when doing mammalian cell culture. A disorganized or overcrowded workspace in the hood can obstruct airflow and lead to technical errors. You must learn to avoid touching the neck or rim of any container. You must learn never to reach across or above any open container. Avoid touching the rim or interior portion of any cap or lid. Be careful that your pipette tip does not touch the exterior surface of its wrapper or against any other objects in the workspace. By keeping in mind these basic principles of aseptic technique, you should have good luck with your self-culture experiments. <laughs>